Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy's Candy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. Today I am coming at you with another in my Halloween card series for 2021. And if you've been with me for, for any of my recent videos, this card will be familiar to you. I wanted to share my process though. It's created with the Luxuriant Leaves stencil, which is new with the September 2021 release. And I just think it's gorgeous. And it reminds me of like a damask. So I wanted to go with kind of a damask fabric or wallpaper kind of vibe for kind of an elegant Halloween card. So jumping right in the process, I use a little bit of pixie spray to hold it down. because you can see I'm going kind of hard <laughs> with my little makeup brush there. And I'm using just some detail black ink from Pink Fresh Studio to lay down a layer of black. And I feel like this stencil is a repeating pattern, but I can't figure it out. And I'm sure it's operator error. <laughs> but I will figure that out at another time. For now, I just went ahead and laid it down. And it does create a little bit of an unsightly seam, if you will. But I'm able to, at least I feel, camouflage that well enough as I go along. So once I did my ink blending, then I pulled out my Pasta Sculptura modeling paste from Stamparia. And I just put that through. I love the texture that this gives. It is a modeling paste. It has actual fibers in it. Fibers of what? I don't know, but there are fibers in it. It dries hard and it dries fast. So as soon as you're done, you want to get it in some water. Whether you put it in a bucket, in a sink, wash it off with soap and water, whatever, just don't let it dry. <laughs> get your tools clean right away. And so I'm really happy with this. You can see the inconsistencies in the way that I laid down the paste, as well as the way that I did the ink blending and that seam right there. But all of that kind of adds to like an elegant grungy factor, in my opinion. And I really like that, that aesthetic overall, but I especially like it for Halloween. So now I'm about to stamp my Halloween image, and it is from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous from the believe it's the Monster Reunion stamp set. I couldn't tell you what year, but it's always available. And I, you saw that I pulled out my little foam mat from my Misty, and that's because this is a red rubber stamp. Like, I think all of the Stampers Anonymous stamps are. Could be wrong, don't quote me, but this one is. The other ones that I have are as well. So, anyway, that foam pad in your Misty just isn't needed when you're using a red rubber stamp. So I stamped it out, I heat embossed it with some Brutus Monroe Raven ink, and you see that I'm coloring with my Arteza Everblends, which are alcohol ink markers. I'm going light to dark, dark to light, trying to use colors that will really marry my image to my background panel. They have that kind of burnt orange, rusty red kind of vibe to it with the grays and the blacks in her hair. And of course, she's a skeleton, so you know her skeleton's gonna be kind of white and gray. But a lot of people will say, don't use your alcohol ink markers to color up a heat embossed image because that embossing can mess up the nibs of your markers. I've never had that problem personally, and I, I can't say I do it a lot, a lot, but often enough to say, yeah, I do it, and I've never had an issue. Now, the issue may be specific to Copics. I don't know. All I can tell you is what my experience has been, and I've not had any problem. But you do you, and if that causes you concern, then by all means, don't heat emboss your images that you're going to color with your alcohol ink markers. I don't know if you noticed or not, on her left, our right, is her arm, and I colored it like her hair. <laughs> but once I realized it, I just embraced it. I just embraced it like I do most of my boo-boos. If I can't color, cover them up, I embrace them. <laughs> and again, I'm just going light to dark, dark to light, until I get it the way I want it. And I'm really happy with it. I end up fussy cutting her out. I thought I might cut her out in an oval, but I really like the idea of having that kind of her hourglass silhouette, if you will, because she's very shapely. And I just, I just thought I would follow her curves with my cutting. And I am using one of three in this die set. It is from Studio Katya. It's called the Dotted Slimline, and it's set one. I have both sets, but this is set one, and it is a set of three. 
Now the reason I went with this one is because it actually has three layers of detail. So it has that outer scalloped edge and then you can see kind of those polka dots that get poked out as well or cut out. I didn't get them all poked out though I tried. <laughs> I didn't realize I had missed some until I was showing my up close pictures but it's okay. So it has the scallop, it has the dots, and then it also has a pierced detail on just inside those dots. And you'll see that when the image is close up. But I really like that die set. In fact, I like both of them a lot. Now when I kind of auditioned my panel up against my card base, I didn't like the color of this card base up against that, um, the pasta sculpture, because it dried actually a little more white and I thought it would be more cream and this this cardstock I don't even know what color it is <laughs> it's not quite beige I don't know anyway I just fixed that problem by adding a little bit of ink blending again with that pink fresh studio detail black ink and that marries it to my card panel so I'm happy with it so now I'm going to take my my little lady skeleton image and lift her up on some foam tape because I just, you know, I just want her to have a little bit of lift, a little bit of detail, a little bit of separation from the panel itself. And you'll see once I once I pull off the release paper and I'm laying her down, I'm trying to figure out exactly where to place her, where she will kind of camouflage that unsightly seam <laughs> that I created with my stenciling. But really, if I'm not talking about it and with the final card, you don't really see it. It just looks like it's supposed to be that way because it looks to me anyway like a weathered piece of fabric or wallpaper and it's going to have errors it's going to have blemishes it's going to have those details that give it the character and kind of that grungy vibe i guess that you're looking for in a halloween card or at least that i'm looking for in a halloween card but there it is i love it i didn't add any any enamel dots any nouveau drops, any kind of um, glossy accents or twine or anything, and I think it's beautiful. This is about as clean and simple as I typically get, so, but I'm happy with it. Guys, tell me what you think. You know, do you, do you like this kind of thing? Is it too simple? Is it still too busy for you if you have a, a clean and simple aesthetic? Let me know what you think. If you like this video, of course, I ask you to give it a thumbs up. If you are not already a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and ring that bell because there's a lot more to come in the next few months with Halloween and fall and Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's. Oh my, so much, guys. You don't want to miss it. So for now, there's another video on your screen that you might be interested in. If you want to go ahead and hit on that and watch it, I would appreciate that. But in the meantime, this is Nancy, the Handy Scandy. And until next time, mwah, love you guys. I'm out.